Oke. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon everybody. Salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Uh, today we have a webinar meeting on Department of Architecture Universitas Islam Indonesia and we have lucky here uh, We are lucky here because uh, today we have uh, Prof. Ibrahim Numan as our guest here. Uh, I introduce myself. My name is Nur Khalis Idam, and I am uh, one of the professor, one of a lecturer in Department of Architecture, Universitas Islam Indonesia, and also. We have a uh, assistant professor Arif Budi Soleha. She is also our lecturer in architecture department Universitas Islam Indonesia. And uh, as you know that uh, we have uh, our speaker, Professor Ibrahim, Professor Dr. Ibrahim Numan. He is teaching architecture in Faculty of Architecture, Fatih Sultan Mehmed University, Istanbul. So uh, let's start this uh, event with uh, saying Basmalah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, As uh, we know that uh, Islamic architecture is known as uh, architecture from Islamic area. It can be a mosque, mostly it can be mosque, but uh, some of Islamic architecture also there, such as a house and a graveyard and so on and so forth. But uh, we know that uh, when we talk about Islamic architectures, And then uh, our mind uh, always uh, looking on mosques, isn't it? So in order to, to discuss all these things, uh, I would like to uh, give the times to our speaker, Professor Dr. Ibrahim Duman. So Hojam, the time is yours. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today uh, we are going to have a general discussion on the entity of uh, Islamic architecture and, uh, through the approach uh, to the great architecture of Ottoman era. So Let's start uh, with uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. As you uh, see in the uh, calligraphy of Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, there is a uh, very great and very distinct uh, order. Everything is in its place. The dimensions of every uh, single uh, word, every single uh, uh, curvature is uh, set according to a, uh, an order. So uh, there is no shift from this order. So where does this come from? How, how do they approach to this orderly uh, arts, orderly calligraphy, orderly architecture in, uh, in Islam? Of course, you know that uh, there is uh, an ayah from Quran that saying that uh, generally in the, by the meaning, uh, not the verse, but uh, by the meaning. Allah has created the earth and the skies and set the order. And then 
turn to istiva in Arsh. This uh, setting order, the, the, uh, the, the uh, special uh, stress in the setting order in this ayah uh, is very, very important in uh, achieving the uh, orderly uh, approach in Islamic architecture and Islamic arts. So we have to ask some questions here. Is there a unique applicable architectural expression for all the women? Or is there a series of Islamic regulations and rules redirecting the already pre-Islamic architectural traditions which exist in the uh, Muslim countries? Or is there any retort sustainable cultural values, architectural expressions in each Muslim country? So we have to uh, find uh, some uh, answers to this, uh, these questions uh, to proceed with, the, with understanding the uh, nature of the Islamic architecture. So we see that uh, almost uh, all, uh, but mostly the Muslim countries are uh, taking place uh, in the geography between the 45 degrees uh, parallel uh, to the equator. Uh, so the, the, uh, as the geography, the temperature, the uh, it changes between zero degree to 25 degrees generally. But it is accepted that architecture is the reflection of the expressions of communities and of nations which are shaped according to the religious, language, traditions, and arts. So, since Islam is the constant in our case, the changes should be due to the factors beside geography. If we uh, see the changes in the minarets in this uh, world, in the Muslim world, we see from the uh, prismatic uh, to the uh, spiral, to the uh, flutes, to the uh, like uh, pencils. So it changes. The, the compare between the uh, Nusantara area and uh, the uh, Anatolian or Istanbul area, it is uh, different. The differences appear in architectural expressions of Muslim communities, even living in the similar climate zones. So the, the change of these factors goes to the changes in, uh, uh, in the architectural uh, expressions. So Islam, uh, Islam is not uh, Born in the uh, in nothingness, uh, when Islam uh, appears in Mecca, there is a known world. Although America and Australia has not been uh, explored yet, but there is a known world, and in this uh, world, the known world, we have uh, the. Uh, civilizations like Anatolian civilizations, Greek, uh, Roman civilizations, Egypt, North Nubia, India, Japan, Nusantara, even in the uh, Maya and Incas in the unknown world of those days. So uh, in Iran, 
uh, we see that uh, the Kisra in Persopolis, there was at, uh, at, uh, a great uh, civilization and the remains of the civilizations. And we know that Prophet وسلم, has written a, a letter uh, to the uh, king of Kisra to Iran and uh, uh, inviting him to, uh, to Islam. And also we said that uh, we see that in the Middle East uh, there was a uh, a civilization from the uh, Prophet Sulaiman's uh, time, and uh, although they use this star as the David star, it is known as the uh, star of Sulaiman, Prophet Sulaiman, uh, the uh, the stamp of uh, Prophet Suleiman and it is uh, not uh, to the Israel it is uh, before just uh, the, the Israel and also in Egypt we know that there is a Coptic culture and Pharaonic culture which have surrounded the Islamic uh, countries or Islamic uh, uh, start and also Roman and uh, Greek uh, cultures have surrounded the Mediterranean seas. And uh, we know that Hagia Sophia or Parthenon or Pantheon uh, have uh, been there when Islam was born. And uh, the uh, Nub uh, Nabatian culture of uh, uh, Semut uh, and Ad and uh, very near to the Mecca area, uh, and also the, uh, in Yemen, the Shiba, uh, you know, the, uh, the Queen of Shiba and the Prophet Suleiman's history. So, uh, Islamic country or Islam, when it is born, uh, is surrounded with, uh, with very great cultures, and we know that uh, there is a exchange of cultures to the Silk Route and the Spice Route, Silk Route to the uh, continents uh, and the Spice Route to the seas. And uh, from the sea, uh, Mecca is a very uh, crossing point uh, of this uh, uh, trade and of course through trade uh, the exchange of cultures. So, and also, Kaaba was accepted uh, to be built by uh, Prophet Adam in the very, very beginning, since the uh, beginning of the human uh, history uh, in, on Earth. And of course, there are various uh, versions of accepted. Oh, I'm Sorry? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, as we uh, know, there are uh, different uh, versions of accepted history uh, how uh, Kaaba was built. Uh, according to one, uh, it is built by the angels and brought to earth uh, for the Adam to make uh, prayer. The second one. Uh, when Adam was sent to earth uh, from Jannah, he asked uh, to Allah, how should I pray to you? And uh, he was ordered uh, by the Lord to uh, as build my house and make tawaf around it uh, 
as the angels are uh, doing around my kursi in arch. So Adam has built uh, the, uh, the Kaaba. And uh, through history, uh, Kaaba was lost uh, during the Knox flood and uh, rebuilt by Prophet uh, Ibrahim. There are many names of, uh, for Kaaba, like Beitul Mahmur, Beitul Sharif, and so on. But please note here that uh, it is uh, known as Beit, the house, the house of Allah. So from since the beginning, the house uh, is accepted as uh, a very crossing point of the uh, or the focal point of the culture house as the uh, place uh, for uh, a symbolic place for Allah in Kaaba and also house of Prophet وسلم, in uh, Medina is also a, uh, a focal point for us. So, Kaaba was a symbol, or is a symbol, and will be a symbol. Symbol of what? Symbol of direction, which is uh, direction and worshipping to a single point, which symbolizes the Vakta, the only point, one point, one Allah, but no Allah, but God. No, uh, no God, but no God, but Allah. So uh, it symbolized the, the directional prayer to a single point, and what uh, symbolizes the the water. and of course the gathering point, the Jama, the Ummah, coming together, and also the circular prayer. The way of praying of the uh, angels, uh, the tawaf uh, around the Kaaba, as the angels is uh, making tawaf around the kursi of uh, uh, Allah in uh, in the uh, arch. So, the accepted principles. Uh, is known from the beginning, very beginning of the uh, mankind. Why? Because, uh, again, according to Islam, according to Quran, the religion is Islam in the eye of Allah. So, the, uh, there is a uh, belief that uh, if somebody drops a stone from the Beitul Mahmur or at the Dura or uh, in, uh, in Arsh, it will drop to the uh, ceiling of Kaaba, a directional, vertical uh, symbolism. So, this uh, symbolism or this vertical symbolism is a dimension which transfer us from the uh, Kaaba to the Arsh, the transfer to the absolute, to the only and one, a vertical uh, symbolism. And also, Kaaba consists a transition between the mortal and the absolute worlds by providing a door or a spiritual gap in vertical. And also be considered as the vertical manifestation or migration towards the absolute. So, then, the vertical symbolic movement 
and the directional movement and the uh, tawaf, the circular movement, uh, makes the, uh, the religious activity around and uh, re uh, religious feeling around Kaaba, but falling apart from the symbolism of unity reflected as the vertical ascent and the inclusive Ummah understanding in Tawaf as the rituals around Kaaba. There's diversions in the religious understanding from Wakta, consequently caused the drifts in the design of the religious buildings in the ancient times. Because we know that uh, Islam has brought to Adam, but they refuse, they divert from Islam, they divert from Adam's and Nuh's and uh, other prophets' uh, uh, religions, and they went to the uh, to the to their uh, multi god uh, uh, prayers. So. Uh, in vernacular architecture, uh, like the uh, in many like many other countries, we see that there are there, uh, we come across the uh, similar activities, similar uh, circular uh, activities around the uh, vertical pole, and also in the prehistoria, the, as the first. Uh, known as the oldest known uh, uh, traditional uh, uh, prayer area uh, found in uh, Turkey today, uh, the Göbekli Tepe. Uh, we also see the uh, design of the temple as the circular with a uh, single and also uh, much after that, because Göbekli Tepe is uh, dated to twelve thousand before uh, uh, today's and to uh, five thousand before today's uh, time, we come across the Stonehenge again. Many Stonehenges we have on the world, not one. So these are also. Uh, circular with uh, some very strict uh, polar and uh, direction. So we have to ask uh, some questions because Kabe was known as Kabe Muazzam, the uh, great, the, the, the almighty, the great Kabe. So how we lost the greatness should the society society's economic benefit or the demand of luxury be organized the architecture or should the Islamic values organize the architecture so we see that uh, we lost the Kaaba because of the economic and luxury uh, demand and it will increase more in the future planning. Or should the architects individualistic, egocentric decisions direct the architecture of the society? If so, the recent or the contemporary architects like uh, the architect of Sanjaklar Jami in uh, Istanbul can get the ideas from a church and bring it and make it a, a, a mosque. The, uh, 
direct copies of the church to the mosque. So is it so individualistic and egocentric? Uh, should the Islamic uh, uh, buildings be designed like this? In the West, architects is coming from architecton, the head builder, the artists, the head artist or the head builder, which is quite contradictory to the Islamic values or Islamic understanding. Because exploring the, the root of the word for the architect, mimar, in the Arabic, we come across the uh, um, umr, which means life. So, dominating the here concern, the understanding of civilization and art, is the wish to join the ever living in reflecting his existence with a new manifestation each, in each moment as could be Yemen who efficient every day is upon some labor of formation. So there is a, a creation and there is a labor of formation uh, in the ever living, in the life, in the umur and the mimar which represents the umur, the life, should understand the ever-living, which is the Allah itself, and the uh, manifestation of this ever-living as the kulli kulli yamin kuvefijan, then he can put his, uh, or he may, he may design his buildings according, and he or she consider himself or herself as the agent of the true artist, true builder, true, uh, true living living. So this is contradictory to the head builder. In the head builder there is an echo like what we have discussed of today's architect. But as Sinan is considering himself as a uh, as, as an agent uh, of the true artist. This is how the Umrah has come into being. Essentially, is it possible for a society that has been that has been able to understand the principles? La mevjude illallah. There is no existence by Allah. La faide illallah. There is no doer but Allah to not comprehend the existence in the unity. So if a society believes and understand la mevjude illallah and la faile illallah so that it may bring them to the la ilahe illallah, they can understand the unity and they may employ the unity and they may consider themselves as the uh, agent for the unity. So that's why Mimasinan is saying that unless an architect has decorated his heart, mosque of hearts, with beautiful morals, he cannot build. Uh, and flourish uh, his environment. So, 
Imran is in a way giving Umar, which is completely sustainable. So Umran can only be achieved by exploring the value judgments of the society in them and reinterpreting them by the Islamic values. This is applicable for architecture as well. Here, the vernacular architecture of Muslim communities come into see. But to understand the, uh, how the application of Muslim uh, or Islamic values to the uh, already existing uh, values of the uh, vernacular understanding, we have to go to the uh, Prophet Sallallahu house and see Masjid al-Nabi as the seat, as a complex that we as the Islamic institutions as a seat. So this open courtyard is like the center point of the uh, totality of the relationships, totality of the understanding of uh, what the uh, way of living, like uh, the relation between the house and uh, the other, uh, the prayer and the other uh, activities, the education with the other activities and the vicinity with the other activities because we have the Prophet houses, Prophet mosque, and uh, the uh, Sufa, the uh, place for the migrant people where Prophet has born and uh, educate them. Uh, so there's a, a kind of totality of life, what, what the understanding of life uh, here. So the, as the Prophet وسلم, is the living Quran, his way of life cons gives us a conceptual model, uh, both individual and uh, institutional ones. So beside Beytullah, the Beit, the house of Allah, the Kaaba, the Prophet's house become as a base for the institutional development in the uh, Muslim architecture. So, if we see that since when Islam is spreading, there were no existing uh, mosque where they start preaching Islam. So what happens? They start like the uh, prophets uh, preaching in Mecca in houses. So when Islam spread to the other uh, parts of the world, the preaching started at houses most probably. So, like in Mali, uh, the architecture of vernacular uh, understanding or the vernacular architecture start reflecting in their uh, mosques. When they start building the mosques, they start building uh, according to their vernacular understanding like the Mali, Jami, Kebir, Jannah, okay. or like in uh, Zaire, Juma Mosque in Nigeria. Again, the, a similar understanding of vernacular architecture exists in the vernacular uh, or in Mogadishu uh, or in China, uh, the, uh, in Hangzhou. Uh, the uh, architecture 
of uh, their houses start reflecting uh, in their uh, mosque architecture. Or, and also in uh, Malaysia, uh, like the uh, Java Sumatra architecture uh, of houses, change places and uh, changing uh, a little bit uh, in the roof style uh, with the triple uh, set uh, set and uh, they uh, use this uh, vernacular understanding at their uh, mosques like in uh, Damak, Indonesia one of the oldest mosques, uh, uh, the vernacular understanding is not uh, a reflex in their uh, mosque architecture, unlike the uh, very remote areas of uh, Karadeniz uh, in uh, Turkey, the uh, wooden houses uh, turn into uh, the uh, small mosques. So, from this vernacular understanding, is there any effect of post typologies on the formal or the world grand architecture of Muslim communities? The house, the house of either the house of Allah, Baytullah, or the house of Prophet so during the Umayyad time, we, we saw that uh, uh, there is the uh, Dome of the Rock, uh, the effect of the Baytullah, the house of Allah, the, the tawaf around or the circulation around the, the uh, uh, considered holy uh, stone where Prophet uh, has set his uh, foot when he's going to Miraj. Or in Damascus, uh, Sham Umayyad Mosque, the Prophet's houses and Prophet's Masjid, the uh, Masjid of Prophet, uh, although it has been built much before Islam, uh, some parts of the uh, this building, uh, the uh, prophet's uh, house typology uh, is uh, reflected to the to the uh, mosque architecture. Of course, the decoration is uh, by mosaics, and it is very very reflecting the Jannah and uh, the, the, uh, the uh, trees in Jannah and the kiosks and the uh, water running under the, uh, the kiosk and the trees like uh, as it is described in the uh, Quran. Or in North Africa in Andalusia, again the prophets uh, Mosque, like in the Prophet's Mosque, the mosque colonnade, uh, but a transept type of uh, clan this time is introduced uh, upon the uh, Prophet's houses uh, or the Prophet's mosques. But unfortunately, uh, after the uh, Islamic era, uh, the Christians has built a, a church, a cathedral in the middle of the uh, the mosque of uh, Cordoba in Indonesia. So, in Abbasid times, we see that uh, it is distributed a, a very huge area. And there are many Emirates, like Ptolemies, like Buwaitis, uh, and Samanids, and the Aglebids, and the Umayyad, and so on, uh, in this time. Uh, 
in the eldest opposite mosque in Iran, for example, the Sassanid influence, the Sassanid houses, and the Sassanid uh, architectural influences are there. And, but uh, the dimensions has increased a lot in this time. Uh, although they are employing the, this, uh, this high post type, uh, plant type of the prophet's mosque, uh, the dimensions has increased uh, to accommodate 200,000 people and so on. So during the past time, we see this the, the uh, first time that uh, they uh, Turks has been introduced to uh, Islam and Islam has been introduced to the Turks. Like what the, the Islam has come to the Baghdad and Samara during time. And uh, there's an exchange of uh, uh, cultural exchange between the Turks and uh, some of the Turkish uh, men uh, have uh, come uh, to Samara as soldiers and uh, as soldiers, slaves, uh, slave soldiers. So they built uh, a city for them, for the army, mainly consisted of Turks, uh, as the, uh, Samara. So the, the, the Samara mosque, again, is very uh, important and it reflects of course the hypostyle uh, typology so the, uh, one of the uh, Turkish generals or so soldiers commanders have sent to uh, to Fusta to, as the commander of the uh, opposite army and and he was uh, Ibn Tulun or Tolun Oğlu in Turkish, Tolun Oğlu, or the son of Tolun, or Ibn Tulun in Arabic. And he was a, a Turkish origin uh, opposite commander, and he set the first independent Islamic state, of course, uh, partially in independent uh, because it is under the uh, as an emirate under the uh, opposite sultan and uh, the Tulun mosque is again the uh, living and uh, example of the uh, multi-colonated by post by mosque and then uh, when we proceed from onwards uh, from here onwards to what happened to the uh, uh, Turkish architecture. We see that uh, after Turks has uh, been introduced uh, in 800s, 450s, 40s, 50s, 60s uh, to Islam, uh, they come to the uh, first to the uh, Iranian, today's Iranian uh, lands and set, set at the Great Seljuk Empire. The other one has moved to uh, towards uh, India and set uh, around Afghanistan, set the Ghaznavids Empire, and then later on uh, the Delhi Sultanates and then the Babur, the Mughal, and the Gurkhan, Georgian uh, empires, and the other one has moved to Anatolia, set the Anatolian Seljukids, and then to Ottomans, and uh, the Ottomans have moved uh, uh, towards the Europe, uh, in the middle of the Europe. So, the first introduction was the Karahanid. So, how they uh, as we discussed before then, when they introduced Islam, there were no mosques 
no madrasas, no nothing as Islamic institutions. So where they preach in uh, Central Asia, uh, this uh, Islamic uh, uh, understanding. Of course, at houses. So the tradition which is more in uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Masjid in Nabi by the Ahl Sufa or the Sufa people who distributed to different uh, places to preach Islam, the Masjid and Nabi traditions has been transferred in the shape and in the meaning to the other places. So the traditions gathered uh, in Prophet's house should have brought the adaptation of the typology in use of the typology of the local institutions. So the house type of the uh, Central Asia with a central dome, a central dome with four A1s, central dome with four A1s has been transferred to the mosque architecture, like in the Kushlak Hazara Mosque. And uh, consequently, the house typologies in the new Muslim areas start playing a great role in the determination of the new typologies. So, like in Krishna Kazaramos, please remember this uh, typology because uh, it will be uh, very important uh, for the future uh, Ottoman mosque architecture. They use the the central dome with four A1s and on the corners some domes, smaller domes. And also there is another uh, typology which is again a central dome but on the sides uh, there are some walls on the sides like in the Talhatamba Mosque. Again, this is very important for the future mosque architecture in uh, later Ottoman period. So remember this pilot, uh, this plant type as well. So when we move to the great uh, statues, we see the, uh, the opposite great mosque by introducing four A1s and a dome in front of Mikha, uh, or of the court of the Great Abbas Mosque, we end up with the Great Mosque of Selçuk's in Isfahan uh, today. And of course, later on they added many, many other uh, prayer areas around. So, a dome in front of the Mikha, uh, A1, 1, 2, 3, 4 A1 with a, uh, around the uh, great courtyard is the typology which comes from the house typology of the Central Asia houses. Again, the, we see the uh, influence of the Krishna Kazana Mosque of the other Central Mosques. Of course, there are other typologies like adding some more uh, domes instead of having one, two, three, four A1s and one a, a dome in the middle and four domes on the corners. They have nine domes like this, which is again very important for the future Ottoman architecture. So when they move to the uh, 
Anatolia from uh, they have different uh, culture, uh, different uh, climate, and uh, uh, different cultures impact on Anatolia. So uh, we see that the Anatolia can be regarded as the uh, the point of stability for the Turks uh, to make the uh, reach of new styles, reach of uh, synthesis to Islamic thought, uh, what they see in uh, the Anatolia. So this place uh, was the same time, at the same time, was a, a point of cultural transition where they will on one hand search for the new horizons for tomorrow and on the other hand refer to their roots their past and their experience it was also a heaven of opportunity of a melting pot where they could compare and arrive to a synthesis between their own roots and their previous civilizations of Anatolia and its vicinity. So, after the Anatolian Seljukid time, where, which was the, the uh, searching time, the synthesis time, uh, during the Emirates period in Anatolia again, we see that uh, there is the, uh, a complete uh, difference of the separation of the prayer area from the uh, Revok uh, courtyard area. Again, similar understanding a dome in front of mihrab which is like the Ghaznavid mosque a dome in front of mihrab and, and then uh, like the four a1 types of uh, one two three four a1 types of uh, uh, plant typology uh, exist on the other hand, early examples, which are called Hangyals, have many doubts about the nature of their functions, but at the same time, they are uh, used as the Zawiyas, and uh, they are the descendants of the houses, house typology. So these are the multifunction of uh, religious buildings, including mosques, including the gathering point of the dervishes and including the uh, uh, giving aid to the poor people. So this typology turned into the mosque architecture of the early Ottoman uh, period with the, uh, uh, with the wings or with the sides or with the zavias around. So, yeah. uh, would you please uh, uh, take a break? So we might uh, have break with the uh, Arif Budi Soleha Hoja. Yeah. So you yeah. might take a rest sometimes. Okay, before we continue okay. to the. It is, it's a uh, nice time we make to, uh, one break and we may continue from there onwards. Okay, no. yeah. okay. Uh, <clears throat> from the beginning to this uh, slide, uh, Professor Ibrahim Numan has already uh, present to us that uh, the beginning of Islamic architecture was actually started from the house, the Prophet house in Medina. So the same thing also happened through, throughout uh, the countries. So that's why maybe the form of the mosque 
itself are different every countries it depend on the people depend on the climate depend on the material and so on so i would like to invite the uh, arif hoja to say your comments or your opinion about this please okay uh, thank you very much uh, professor idam uh, can you hear my voice properly yes yes okay okay thank you yeah uh, thank you very much for also uh, inviting me to this event i think this is a very unique opportunity for us to meet each other in a quite a unique uh, era in our life right uh, okay um Thank you, Prof. Ibrahim. I think this is a very uh, insightful and uh, interesting uh, lecture. For me, uh, especially, I think I, I also learn a lot uh, from your lecture today. I just want to make some general comment first and then maybe raise some uh, questions uh, because also in the chat, I think uh, we have already uh, see lots of uh, questions here. Uh, so hopefully, uh, uh, Professor Ibrahim can uh, explain a lot. Can I uh, share screen, Pak Nur? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, actually, my... Uh, uh, my... Uh, no, uh, yeah, my, I think yes. I think uh, Prof. Ibrahim has yeah, to yeah, speak. I, to that. Yeah, I should. Yeah. Uh, I think I should. Uh... Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can Can you see my uh, slides yes. here now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. At first, uh, Professor Ibrahim already. Uh, uh, mentioned about uh, the architectural expression that is more uh, based on uh, religion or maybe you can call it culture, tradition, and so on, rather than geography. This is a, a very interesting point that uh, will uh, also answer some of the question uh, in the chat room that uh, what is actually uh, influence uh, the expressions of a mosque, for example, in Indonesia or in many uh, countries. And it and this is also raise a questions uh, to uh, some who are uh, very concerned with uh, building science, for example, uh, because uh, architectural expression is more on a culture rather than a climate, for instance, right? So, um, yeah, uh, from the uh, from the view of uh, culture, maybe. Uh, well Geography is uh, less uh, having uh, uh, influence to the architectural expression rather than, for instance, uh, religion, uh, tradition, and so on. Maybe they can uh, 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 explain later on. Maybe Professor uh, Ibrahim can explain later on. This is also related to some of the uh, question in the chat room. And also, uh, it is uh, quite interesting when uh, Professor Ibrahim mentioned about uh, how Kaaba is now has been uh, developing that uh, not only about the uh, Islamic values there and symbol, but more on like, for example, the economic and uh, luxurious or we can call it as uh, architecture, uh, more as a commodity. So what we think about this, uh, do we have, do we going to uh, <clears throat> go to this uh, kind of a trend or maybe this is uh, not a good one? Uh, and also Professor Ibrahim uh, uh, trigger us to think about uh, who we are as an architect and what, uh, what is our uh, connections with God or with Allah. As an art, uh, uh, he, uh, he specifically mentioned that uh, in the West, for instance, architecture is from the word archi and tecton, which means uh, head builder or 
a master builder, but in Islam, we more likely to see a architect as an umar or a life or in a Turkish word as a mimar. So this is uh, also uh, raise a question uh, for us that we as an architect is a creator in the world, but at the same time, we also the creations of Allah. We are on uh, the, the, the great artist is Allah, not us. Yeah, so it's a, uh, uh, yeah, raise our questions about uh, we as an architect as creator or versus creations. Uh, then also, um, yeah, uh, in the chat room, I see that uh, some of us are still uh, questioning what is actually Islamic architecture is, or what is the definition. When Professor Ibrahim uh, tell us a lot about the development of Islamic architecture in Turkish uh, area, whether during the Seljuk and then the Ottoman and so on and so forth, we also see that uh, uh, in, in there, we, we can uh, think about what is actually Islamic architecture is. Yeah. Uh, if we look at the, one of the um, prominent organizations such as Aga Khan, they tell that uh, Islamic architecture is more on the Islam uh, is architecture for the community, for the Islamic community, or uh, more like a, a architecture uh, in the community, in the Islam, uh, for the purpose or, or for the benefit uh, of Islamic community as a whole. And then as Pahit Omer, for instance, uh, uh, telling us that Islamic architecture is more on the architecture than delivering the message of Islam. What is uh, the message of Islam, such as uh, we have a value, the, 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 uh, so on and so forth. And for uh, today, we also heard from Professor Ibrahim that uh, value is very important. Uh, that um, Islam is coming, uh, like for example, when we look at the slides on the uh, Kaabah and the Tawaf inside it, it's more like a value on the, uh, in the mortal life and uh, in the absolute life. And then it uh, also we tell, we're talking about order. Uh, at the beginning, Professor also uh, telling us that Islamic architecture is uh, very much orderly. And then uh, when we're talking about, like for instance, the architecture in the Ottoman era or in the Turkey, uh, Seljuk and, and et cetera, we see that, for example, uh, the order of Iwan, the order of Dome and et cetera is, is uh, very much, uh, we can see it there. And uh, one of the uh, Cambridge professor telling us that uh, architecture, Islamic architecture is more on form, function, and symbol or meaning, uh, Professor Hillen Brand. Uh, this, uh, this is some of the, uh, what I uh, just look at uh, some in, in some literature and what uh, Professor Ibrahim already telling us today. Uh, Yeah, and also uh, it is very important to note that uh, Islamic architecture is coming from the prophet's house and then uh, combined with the local and then we can find that new typologies. I think this is also can maybe uh, answer some of the questions uh, from the chat room, which actually asking about uh, what are the, uh, in, uh, what are the, basic uh, de design or the influence uh, why uh, a mosque in Indonesia, for instance, has this kind of form and so on and so forth. I think, partner, this is some of the highlight that I can uh, record from uh, Professor Ibrahim's uh, lecture today. And maybe uh, Professor Numan will, will continue with uh, the slides or maybe to answer the questions. Thank you, Banur. Thank you very much for your summarize up to this part, uh, Dr. Uh, Arif. Uh, I think there are some questions on the chat room. Professor Ibrahim Luman, would you like to continue or to answer the questions? Well, uh, uh, is it possible to? Uh, answer the questions uh, 
at the end of the uh, meeting, uh, okay. uh, not to uh, break the uh, the continuity of the uh, of the talk. Okay. Tamam hocam. So please write your uh, questions in the chat room and Professor Ibrahim Ruman would like to answer your question in, in the end of these uh, sessions. Okay. Okay, please continue hojam. We were saying that uh, since uh, the Islam has preached uh, in the houses, because uh, let's go a little bit back and then uh, make a feedback and then uh, we may continue. When Islam has uh, introduced or have as uh, introduced to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam peace be upon him let's ask this question were there any mosques of course not so where has he introduced or start preaching islam start start uh, telling Islam to other people. There are some houses. His house and uh, Darul Ekran, which is a house again. Darul Ekran and uh, later on uh, we see that they built a, <clears throat> in a room, they built a, or they use one of the room, or they introduce a mosque or a prayer area in uh, Sayyidina uh, Abu Bakr's house in, uh, in Mecca. So after Mecca time, the first mosque was built in Cuba, and of course, the proper mosque has been built beside Prophet's house. So the house with the mosque, with the uh, uh, educational area, Sufa, is consisting the the uh, the seat for the Islamic uh, institutions. So when they when they come to the other places, they start preaching in uh, mosques, uh, not in mosques but in houses again. And the mosque typologies mostly develop from this house typologies. So like it here again, uh, the house typology turned into in Anatolia as well and uh, in. Ottoman time, uh, the combination of the house typology uh, with the multifunctional uh, houses, the multifunctional mosques like uh, Yeshil Jami uh, or like uh, Bursa uh, Yildirim or like Bursa Hüde Vendigar, uh, we see the similar understanding with four A1 house types with a central court in the middle, the prayer area again with the dome and some other uh, functions as well. Of course, like in is the issue, we see the introduction of the, the one dome. So uh, the introduction of master domes. And as you remember, the nine domes uh, in uh, Central Asia, we see that the similar type of the nine domes mosque in the Edirne Eski Jami. And we come to the 
uh, first classical Ottoman mosque, which is the Üç Şerefeli uh, mosque, the three uh, Şerefe mosque uh, in Edirne. So the prayer area with the courtyard again has distinct a separation. And in the prayer area, we see that it is almost the similar, almost the same typology of the uh, Talhatan Baba Mosque in uh, Central Asia. Uh, I ask you to remember the, that uh, plant type. So this is the same plant type. So, starting from uh, that, we come to the Fatih Mosque. We introduce the one single uh, uh, dome in the middle and one half dome. And in Bayezid Jami, two half domes with the central dome. In Üsküdar, Mihrimah, three half domes with the uh, central dome and uh, this plant typology is completed with the uh, Shehzade mosque with the, the central dome and four A1 or four half domes on four sides. So here development of the central dome prayer area in the classic Ottoman architecture. Can we say that the half domes recalls the four A1s of the uh, Central Asian house typology? Maybe we can. So all the achievements in the architecture on the way to Istanbul has been reflected to Suleiman. So the Suleimaniye Mosque and Complex, in a way, is the reflective synopsis of the Turkish Islamic architecture. So it is not a direct copy of the Hagia Sophia, but you see that it is the achievement of the uh, or the experience of the architecture of Turkish historic architecture of history. So it is great, but its greatness, its greatness is it comes from it is uh, sincerity from it is simplicity, simplicity of the geometry, simplicity of the forms. It, it, is, it is not uh, rise, it doesn't rise uh, or pop out, but it rises from the earth to the skies. As a, as a pyramid, and also it is respective to its uh, surroundings, to the nature. It is it joins with the vicinity, with the with the community around it. So, with the opening. Uh, of the uh, eyesight windows, it joins with the community around. Also, it gathers all the community in one center, which represents the water, and also through the uh, like in Kaaba, to the uh, vertical 
e, simbolik e, esen it rises to the absolute it brings the lively uh, world to the absolute world again Süleymaniye beside Süleymaniye Selimiye is the other peak of the architecture of uh, Turkish Islamic so it is magnificent it is the uh, the big point of the understanding of both the understanding of uh, the Islamic uh, the values so let's go back to the Santara you know very well you know how the uh, uh, houses been built and how the uh, mosque have got its shape from the houses and let's compare the uh, the peak points the upper point of the turkish architecture with the indonesian architecture we see the same similar understanding because they are both built upon the similar or the same values of Islam. Like to gather around, put the Jama under one water space, put the Jama in one water space. Like in the cup, have the direction of. prayer to the Kaaba and of course have the middle in the midpoint of the Jama to have the vertical symbolic shaft which brings the uh, Jama to the absolute to the worldly to the absolute to the worldly, to the absolute. So, and there are the uh, vertical placement. The Jama through the transition it comes to the uh, door the Jama through the transition it comes to the here it is not a dome but the roofs and in the midpoint of the roofs it shows the unity and it reflects the vertical ascent uh, from the material to the absolute here again the same similar understanding. So we see that uh, in essence there is no difference. Although in the uh, first gallons it seems very different. They are not different than each other. So Thank you very much for listening to me. Yes, Nur Hocam. Thank you, uh, Professor Ibrahim Hocam. Uh, yes, uh, that's the great presentations to explain about the Islamic architectures from the beginning to the, to the peak of Istanbul and some example of the architecture from Indonesia as well. Okay, uh, I think it was quite very interesting to, to all of us. Since we are here as a Muslim countries, we have also many 
moss, but uh, the moss itself uh, not speaking in the same language. Um, some moss uh, with the different architectural styles, uh, with the Arabesque style, some moss uh, developed by our culture, our own culture, like a traditional uh, Joglo or horse in Java or traditional horse in other countries, then they develop to the form of moss. Uh, there are some questions here, uh, Prof. Ibrahim Ojam. Uh, I would like to read to you uh, from Buati Ermawati. Uh, what kind of factors that affect to the form of the moss? Factors, of course. Uh, yes. The form uh, of the mosque uh, and traditionally or uh, today's mosque. Today's mosque, uh, as I show you in the uh, beginning, uh, the uh, ecocentric architects have taken place. There is uh, very uh, uh, little for the society to say on the architecture of mosques today in many Islamic countries. In Indonesia, still it is uh, continuing with the uh, traditional, uh, but uh, like in Turkey, uh, either they are the uh, uh, total uh, repetition of the uh, classical mosques or the, the contemporary ones, as I show you, are the uh, reflections of the uh, self of the architect, not the society. So this is one factor, the, the value systems of the society should uh, govern the uh, form of the mosque. Of course, besides the materials, available materials. Here in, in your country, for example, uh, wood is uh, plenty. So the availability is wood. Wooden architecture is uh, uh, more common. In uh, Turkey, uh, marble, stone, uh, is uh, available. So that uh, stone architecture uh, in uh, Mali, for example, as I show you, mud. So the adobe architecture uh, developed there. So the availability of the material, the uh, uh, climate, the uh, rain conditions, the topography, uh, of course, economy is there. So there are some uh, material uh, effects, and there are some moral effects of them and the development. So the materials are this geography, topography, uh, and uh, so on. The, uh, the others are the uh, value systems of the society, uh, the belief system, uh, the understanding of Islam uh, is there, of course, uh, because there are very different understanding of Islam. And of course, uh, uh, the uh, the uh, way of life is uh, also uh, important. And of course, the, the knowledge, the tradition of architecture. Okay. Okay, Hojam. Uh, there is a question about the courtyard. Is it originally from Islam or just a local 
affectants. And don't take the courtyard as a as a open place or as a, yani for me the courtyard is the center point center point of the activities i take the courtyard of uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mosque not as a courtyard of the uh, of the uh, medina uh, architecture then but uh, the the central point of the uh, understanding of the total life totality of life a wahda understanding of life like uh, the house like the mosque and like the education the, uh, and like uh, the all the activities because we know that the in the courtyard uh, many things are happening uh, when the uh, envoys from other uh, tribes come to meet to, with prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they gather in the courtyard and they enter to the mosque to uh, talk to the prophet and of course we know that uh, there there was a, a, a an occasion some uh, troops have come to perform something and they uh, gather around courtyard that uh, they uh, start watching the troops uh, for performance and uh, Say that in Aisha was very young and uh, she cannot uh, see. So there are two versions. Either Prophet has uh, taken her to her, his shoulder and make him make her to see the uh, performance, or take her uh, to his knees to raise her up for to see the performance so that we see that this courtyard is a center of activity center of uh, life of nebi way, way of life joining the education joining the masjid prayer joining the responsibility to the family joining to the uh, Uh, responsibility for the community, serving to the community, serving to uh, house, serving to masjid, serving to uh, education, madrasa, the art is there, the, com uh, to, to, the totality of uh, life. So, uh, this courtyard might be reflected as understanding the center point of the Turkish architecture, Turkish house architecture of Central Asia, the center uh, domed place, might be uh, resemble to the center, central activity, central joining point. In your case, for example, the, uh, the four uh, pillars of the uh, Joklo makes the center. So the center point is again is very important for you for your architecture and if you bring the Islamic value and introduce it to the center Then you end up with what? You end up with the central uh, understanding of the uh, of the mosque, of the jama. So jama actually is what jama actually is the way of life of prophet should be. So it is it, the way of life of prophet yes. introduced to the. Uh, 
to the mosque. So the yes. courtyard of the mosque introduced to the uh, uh, either to the Turkish or the Indonesian architecture. Yes, uh, it was from Papa Ahirawan about uh, this courtyard, but. Uh, we also maybe uh, have to note that uh, it's maybe a little bit different between courtyard in the subtropical area and what we call as courtyard here, because here we don't have a courtyard, but uh, instead we have a kind of terrace, we call it Sarambi, uh, in the front of the mosque, that is the function is uh, similar with the courtyard in a subtropical country. I think it's just kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, difference, but the function is the same between this uh, Sarambi and courtyard, maybe, because of the climate, of course. And uh, next, uh, we are going to the next questions. Uh, it's about Yes, I think you already mentioned, Prof. Uh, Ibrahim, it was from Pa Arif. Was, it was uh, Prophet Muhammad built the mosque based on the culture, not based on the Sharia? Is it correct like that? From Pa Arif. Well, uh... Then we, we, have, we have to ask this question. Who is Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? If we accept Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the living Quran, then what he is doing whether it is from the continuation of culture or not, we cannot say, we cannot separate what he is doing from Sharia or from Quran, because he lives the Quran in every moment, in every breath of his, so that he shows us how to live Quran in our life. So what he built there, although it seems that it may be uh, reflected the uh, house type or the, the, uh, the culture of those days, uh, if it is contradictory to the Sharia, to the uh, to what Quran is saying, definitely Prophet would not allow it. So we cannot separate both. It's in between each other. Okay. And also from Arifmu 75, uh, asking about the, the trend of the uh, you know, uh, modern architecture for the mosque. Uh, the, what do you think about this? The trend? Of modern style of architectures. The trend of modern style of architecture. Contemporary architecture. Contemporary yes. architecture. Okay, of course, yeah. Uh, we have to ask this question. Who is the, the builder? Who is the architect? If the architect, if we take the architect as the uh, product of the society, then we have to go to the society itself. Take Turkey, for example. Turkey today is a uh, Western country 
all Western uh, notions, all Western cultural values, and so on. Although uh, most of the uh, uh, people believes in Islam, totality in totality, uh, we are uh, continuing with the Western culture. We adopted the Western culture. So what the architects are doing today, as I show you in the beginning, uh, in the uh, in one of the mosques, underground mosque, uh, the architect is continuing with the Western culture. So what they are producing is the Western pro production. So how to put the Islamic value in it? This is the most important uh, thing today. If you move from your uh, traditional culture, if you change yourself from tradition to a global understanding, then what you are what you are producing will be global, will reflect the global understanding. And beside that, the architects they are deciding what to do. Not the community is deciding what to do. It's up to the architect's ego. Own understanding. So the architect himself decides what the shape of the, or the, what the form of the mosque should be. Not the society. Because unfortunately our societies are in a quest, uh, under a very, very big question mark. What to do as the society, what to accept as the society, we are hesitating. We are under a very great uh, question. So still up to now, Within the global society, within the global world, we, are, we cannot find ourselves a, a place, a, a, a place for our own, for our, for our own society, for our own societies. Uh, Reflection. That's why the uh, contemporary architecture, or mosque architecture, or the other architectures, they are they, uh, upon the architect to decide. So the architect uh, is individual, and what they produce is the individualistic uh, expressions. Uh, not the, so of course, some of them are uh, trying to find out the, uh, the continuation, cultural continuation uh, of the form. But still, many of the uh, architecture that has been produced uh, in uh, many of the uh, Muslim countries today are the reflection of the global world. Okay, Hujan. So uh, it was related to the the question from pa Farouk Hakiki as well. What just you mentioned about the 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 importance of the culture competence to the architect as a designer and planner related to the society. 
uh, some question about the explanation from uh, to the other relation with the Turkish architecture such as Persian or Shafawit from Faiz Rizki and the Mughal as well. Uh, what are the characteristics of them? And also from Bonifacio Bayusena, uh, he also asking about the characteristic distinction between Islamic architecture from Ottoman or Seljuk and the Islamic architecture from Iberian Peninsula or Andalusia. Do you have an uh, explanation about this, professors? Of course, yeah, the, 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 the uh, culture, uh, again, and beside the, the, what we have discussed in, in the uh, first question, uh, the topography, the geography, and so on and so forth, and beside this, the culture is uh, important. And, uh, development of the uh, uh, architectural expressions like the Andalusians or the uh, Musantara architecture or I mean the mosque architecture or the Islamic uh, uh, expressions of the uh, local architectures. Uh, there is no one Islamic architecture. There are many Islamic architectures, but the Islamic architecture, the architecture of Muslim communities based their architecture on their culture, on their environment, on their uh, knowledge, way of life, and so on. So that's why, although the Islamic values are there, they are different than each other. They look different than each other. So uh, coming to the question, what is the differences or what is the, the, the transition that after the Turks have introduced Islam in Central Asia, they develop their Muslim architecture according uh, to the Islamic values and their own understanding of uh, forms, shapes, because each community has its own uh, like or uh, uh, preferences of forms. For example, Turks prefer the, the dome. Uh, you prefer the, the roof, each roof, or uh, the, uh, the uh, Arabs have preferred the uh, hypostyle, multi-colonated. Uh, and uh, flat roof, and th this is their preferences, the, the co communal pre preferences. So these communal preferences, when they when they get in touch with other cultures, like if, when the Turks with the dome with the four A ones uh, have moved from there to to India, to the site of India from Afghanistan to uh, India. Uh, of course, the Mughals, they are not the Mongols. Of, they are the Turks. They are the Babur. Uh, and they are the Sultanate people. And, and uh, the uh, uh, Ghaznavid people. Then. And these are the one arm, one branch of the Turkish architecture which moves to India. And of course, they come, come, come across with the 
climate of India, climate uh, materials uh, availability of India, the pre pre uh, Turkish Islamic culture of India, pre pre Turkish Islamic uh, architecture of India. So they blended and they with their own understanding and with their own preferences with the uh, introduction of the Islamic values, they changed this to the uh, like uh, Babur uh, architecture or Delhi Sultanate architecture. Okay, Hajam. So Islamic architecture is flexible actually. It, it can merge everywhere with any kind of uh, existing uh, climate, nature, and people in the local uh, condition, of course. So this was related to the question from pa Deva Rafael as well about asking about the uh, Hanet of Sibir located in Taiga Piums. Uh, of course, it's related to the climate over there with this gable roof. Uh, for the moss. Uh, from Pa Abda Muluk, uh, from the typology shown as a landmark, uh, Kaaba, Masjid, and Musola uh, surrounding by open space is, is this was a main character of Islamic architectures. So you already uh, explained about this uh, before. Okay, so I think that's all the question for, for you uh, in this session, uh, professors. But uh, I will ask, uh, Dr. Arif to have a short comment and then I will open again, maybe directly to the participants because we have a, a professor as well here, many professors. One of them is Professor Joseph also here. Maybe you have to say something, Professor Joseph. <laughs> and also we have a participant from Turkey here. Oh, uh, some student from Turkey, your, your student, Hojam, uh, also following this uh, webinar. And others, uh, uh, gentlemen and ladies, also uh, following this uh, seminar as well. Okay, Bu Arif, do you have comments uh, for these sessions? Please make a short because of time. Yeah, thank you very much, Noor. I think it's more interesting now it's getting hotter <laughs> the discussion uh i would like to share uh, one more uh slide is that okay okay please yeah uh yeah uh just to uh this is not like a like make some conclusion or, or uh, like yeah, but just to give us uh, a more broad understanding about what is Islamic architecture, and uh, there are um, <clears throat> this is I found from Hillen Brand that he uh, mentioned about Islamic architecture from three different aspects. First is forms that we can see that courtyard, for instance, is one of the most important uh, uh, form or, or architectural elements in uh, uh, most architecture, architecture, for instance. And then we have like dome, for instance, E1, minaret, yeah. Uh, maybe we have also in Indonesia, uh, menara, and then arabesque or uh, geometrical uh, ornaments. Uh, and some floral, for instance, and then shan, yeah, some of the elements in in a palace or in a madrasa, for example, and in mosque itself, we have some of the 
vitamins, for example, mikrob, masrobia, maxuro, and etc. And in a, in a function, uh, uh, the function of Islamic architecture then getting broad and broad, yeah, for uh, from uh, in the early uh, development of uh, the architecture is coming from mosque, uh, from the house of the prophet, and then the mosque, and then palace, the um, mausoleum, for instance, or tomb, madrasa, hammam, and then we're getting more broad, for example, uh, uh, urban uh, or settlement area, and then the 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 the, the tiniest uh, uh, element is like, for example, the house or the uh, home for for the for the people itself. And then we we uh, we can also uh, uh, talk about the meaning in architect Islamic architecture. Professor Ibrahim tells us a lot about how symbolic versus pragmatic, for example, that uh, the architecture from the prophet is uh, coming from the the values in uh, from the Quran. And then, uh, for example, if you're talking about the contemporary architecture, uh, the architect is more uh, on his ego, for example. We also talking about the profane and uh, sacred area, for example, and the meanings like, for example, we can talk about the uh, Islamic architecture as uh, we as, as an architect is a create, creator, but also at the same time we are the creations of God that we also have to uh, worship Him. Uh, I think this some um, uh, this this diagram can help us to to understand more about Islamic architecture. But uh, by the way, we are talking about the development in the contemporary era. Uh, uh, I invite uh, all of us to, for example, open the agahan uh, for architecture. For example, uh, we are uh, in 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 many of uh, the uh, recipients of the awards of agahan architecture. Uh, they are not only talking about the forms that we are already talking here, but uh, uh, form as uh, values that uh, Professor Ibrahim also mentioned. Uh, how we uh, design in the architecture community for uh, uh, mostly in a poor area or in a slum area or architecture community in uh, in the area that is still uh, underdeveloped for example in africa or in many countries in asia and so on and so forth i think this is a very good point for us to learn a lot uh, and more about what is Islamic architecture and uh, how we as a uh, as contemporary architects trying to understand what is actually Islamic architecture, what are the values, what are the symbolic meaning, and so on. I think that's my uh, comment for now, Pak Nur. Okay, thank, you, thank you very much for your summarize, uh, to Arif. So, I will invite uh, Professor Joseph Priyotamo would you like to 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 give your uh, short uh, uh, opinion or a statement or whatever? Uh, I will unmute you. Please unmute your microphone. Okay. Okay. Well, Please, Good Professor. Afternoon, Professor Ibrahim. It's very interesting lecture you give this afternoon, but I'm afraid that I have a very good and good strict opinion. It is not because I'm a non-Muslim, but because I really love Islamic architecture. But I I have the opinion, uh, feeling that your presentation mostly on Turkish Islamic architecture. Well, I am looking forward to seeing the contemporary picture of Islamic architecture. Uh, Mrs. Arif, Talika, is just uh, 
give a slide on who is Islamic architecture. But in terms of function of Islamic architecture, it's only religious buildings that is Islam considered as Islamic architecture. For instance, Burj Al Khalifa. Is it Islamic? Also, buildings that it can uh, awarded by Aga Khan, who are not religious buildings, are they not Islamic architecture? I don't agree. Yeah, Islamic architecture is not architecture of Islam, but architecture in the spirit of Islam. Because if architecture of Islam is exclusively for Islam. Well, to me, that is the, my opinion, yeah? But Islamic architecture, not exclusively for Islam. Any building that may conform to principles in Islam is considered Islamic architecture. That's my opinion. Okay. So, well, if we, if we, if we, if we, um, put and could confront these issues, then the discussion will go for three or four days, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, thank, thank you, you Professor Joseph Priyatama. We are, okay, we, we still have a series. So maybe uh, next series, we will invite you, if you uh, <laughs> willing to, of course. Okay. Thank okay, you. thank you. Of course, Dan, it is uh, true what the, uh, our colleague is saying. Uh, I agree to, 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 to uh, many extent uh, to it. Uh, especially, I have to ask uh, one question. Is there any uh, architecture of Islam according to Sharia? Is there uh, any description oh. of uh, architecture? So, there is, the, there is the architecture of Muslim people architecture of Muslim people. And if the Muslim people really live in Islam and put their value judgments to shape their environment, their environment can be, as professor says, uh, can be considered as Islamic. For example, uh, I'm going to the very, very, very far extent. And that's why I show you that slide uh, in the, uh, the mosque architecture, one of the most contemporary mosque architecture of Turkey and compare it with the, as form wise, in form and in plan. With the, uh, with the with the church, so is there an Islamic value in it? Although it is a mosque, and although they pray in it, although some elements of the mosque are still there, the mihrab, the uh, mimbar, and the uh, minaret is there. Is it Islamic? Although it is a mosque, is it Islamic? I don't think so. Because the spirit of Islam is not there. It's not there, yes. That's yeah. a, I, I agree. That's why I did ask this question. <laughs> and the spirit should be there. So the, uh, any building, a house can be Islamic. Oh, yeah. A house cannot be Islamic. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, an educational building can be established mm -hmm. or not. But what I uh, discuss here today, these values, how they reflect in history through the Turkish side. There is the Mughal side, there is the uh, uh, Indonesian side, there is the uh, Arab uh, side to it. We have to, uh, as history, uh, there are many, many, many branches uh, for the Muslim people. The Muslim people uh, put their own uh, judge value judgments uh, and blend their value judgments with Islam and make their value judgments as Islamic value judgments. Okay. I think it is very interesting to talk about this. That's why, yeah. according to the professor, just it should be the next uh, discussion about <laughs> this. <laughs> we can discuss more deeply. Is it, Professor Joseph? <laughs> okay, we agree about that. Um, uh, it was quite a great discussion here. And I think because of time, so Professor Ibrahim, we have to prepare ourselves <laughs> because we, we want to have a, uh, you know, break fasting <laughs> after. Yeah. And, and I, I, I have six more hours to <laughs> reach the fasting. Six so more Ma hours. Maghrib in Istanbul, what time, Mujam? No? Eight, eight, eight uh, 17 or 8.20. Uh, 8.20. So yeah. three hours more than us if you're yeah. fasting in Istanbul right now. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but uh, still, uh, there are many students would like to study in Istanbul from Universitas yeah, Islam. They, they are most welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ajam. So I think, Papa, uh, Papa, if we put that's all uh, our discussion today. But before we are closing, we would like to open the camera so we can take the picture all of us as the proof that we are here. So please open your your uh, uh, camera. Is it off? Are you ready to take a picture? I don't know. Okay, Banisa, please take a picture. Okay. One, two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight pages we have. Banisa, already done? Okay, we have uh, 180 participants here. So thank you for all of you. And we are waiting for the next uh, uh, webinar. So I will unmute all. Uh, uh, Thank you. 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 Thank you.